Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on the Stealth Series. Okay, I've, I've had some really good feedback from this series on what we've talked about, personal stealth, of not giving away your position, of going in and out quietly. Okay, I've also had quite a few of you ask about caching and how to leave things there because you're interested in doing an off-grid cabin type deal and I want to be able to leave things there and not make them obvious so they don't get stolen because I'm not going to be there. I'm setting up this remote area. I may have a platform. I may have a camping area cleaned out there and I'm 60 miles away at home and I only come out here once or twice a month. But I want to leave some gear there or I want to put things. Or maybe I live in a high crime area and I want to be able to hide something outside of my obvious house to keep ne'er-do-wells from getting it. Well, we had a lot of that when I was young. And I grew up around a lot of people that did shine and did other things, and they didn't trust the government. They didn't trust banks. And because of that, they very likely didn't leave anything that could be taken away from them, if, if at all possible. So there was uh, family members that whenever their uh, Social Security check showed up, they'd immediately cash it and take every penny. They left like $10 in the bank in a savings account so that they would have some place to cash a check. Besides that, they didn't trust them. They didn't want their money anywhere near that. And so I know of a distant family member, but I'll tell you one of the things that he did. And part of what we're about to talk about comes from some of that stuff. He didn't, he didn't trust people. He didn't trust the government to be there when he needed them because he lived out in the country. So if he called with a, that would have been the days before 911, it would be maybe a couple hours before anybody showed up. And so stopping a theft or something like that was up to him. Plus, you couldn't just watch 24 hours a day. And so what he did was he built a safe, is what he called it. Now, I've heard these called many things. I've heard them called hides. I've heard them called caches. I've heard them called hidey holes and cubby holes. And even called one, uh, one called uh, someone with a little more education, a alouette or an obelette. An obelette, which is French for small forgotten place. Okay? But what he did was where his front porch was, he had on the right side of his property, right side of his yard, was his cow pasture. On the left side was agricultural fields. So in the corner of that cow pasture right there, he took a day whenever other people were busy or at work, and he took a truck, and he pulled it up there, and he put that with a trailer, and blocked the view from the road. On this side of it, he dug down and he made a hole, a pit. Into that pit, and I'm going to show you the step by step, he buried one of the old large World War II type steel galvanized trash cans. Guys, these are not like the ones you buy today. This one was so strong, a man could easily stand on the top of that thing and not worry about it collapsing. He sunk it down just below ground level. Then he put a folded over piece of roofing tar paper over the top of it, about four foot square. Then he put dirt back on it. Then he moved his truck out of the way. And then he brought up one of them big round rings for feeding rings and sat that over it and put hay in it to feed the cows. Are you gonna dig up under a hay pile? But could you do it quietly? Could you sneak into it in the middle of the night if somebody else had taken over your house and dig down to get to what was in that box? Yes. And that was his idea. And so every day he could step out on his porch, having morning coffee, and see that pile. He's going to keep adding hay to it. Since it's got the rings on it, the cows can't get up there and stomp on it or whatever. So it's safe. It's a safe where he could see it. Now, today, with things the way they are. If you want to put something in the ground, out of sight, out of mind, and be able to recover it, we're gonna talk about that. Now, my preferred thing to have, 
is this. And this is a locking three round mortar box. Okay? It's like a big ammo can, but it's deep. Now I got mine from a local surplus place and that is Kaufman's Military Surplus. They may or may not have these. Just contact them and tell them you want the really, really tall ammo can. Okay, but they got some ammo cans. Now, back to, and I'll put down in the description their contact phone number or where to give them a call. Just tell them Blackie sent you. Okay? And they'll work with you. Now, why do I want such a tall metal can? One, it's steel. It was military, which means it can handle rough handling. It's tough. It's a type of steel that does not rust easily. It does rust, but it does not rust easily. Second, the top has a seal in it, a good rubber seal. And then it seals up watertight. It's nice and deep. And I'm going to bury this so I want access from the top. It's not so deep, it's about full arm depth for me to reach. So how deep is it? That deep from my fingertip to my armpit. That's how deep that is. When I go all the way to the bottom, I'm in my armpit. But I could reach that from ground level, couldn't I? So I can layer stuff up in here. Now what all am I going to put in here? Well, let's say I've got something that telescopes like this. Something that you could push a pin and pull it in half, put the halves in beside each other, that'd be good. Or like this where I'm going to put a tripod out there because it telescopes in and out and it can get short enough that I can put it down in here and have it completely in there. Okay? I could put food supplies. I could put all kinds of equipment in here. Okay? Anything that I could fit in here. An extra Alice pack, I mean a haversack with full gear. I could put ammunition. I could put a firearm in here if I wanted it on my camp. If I didn't want to bring one in and out, I could do that. I don't want to put anything in here that if it did disappear, it, oh God, I'll put my granddaddy's old such a, no. What goes in here is the stuff that's usable. I know how to use it. And at the same time, if I lost it, it would not be the end of my universe. But if I severely needed it, this would be my go-to. It's a bug out bag I'm putting in the ground, okay? Now, I like the ammo cans, like I said, because they're metal. And so now let's talk about, before we ever put this in the ground, let's talk about the ground, and then we're gonna talk about how to treat the can to go in the ground. Okay, here we go. Here, Here's ground level. Okay, first, I'm gonna pick a place that's above the water table. I don't wanna be down in that bottom where this is gonna be swampy ground. I want dry ground. How do I know this? Figure out where the rough water table is and go a couple feet above it. Go up the hill a little bit. I don't wanna be on the top of the hill. I'm silhouetted and I can be seen too far out. And I don't wanna be all the way down in that bottom. Too big a risk for the water table. So I wanna be up about two thirds way up a hill in an enclosed area kind of private where you can't obviously see it to begin with, okay? I don't want it in the middle of a path. I don't want it next to the path. I want to be off the path. I'll talk about how to triangulate and get back to it, but at first I pick my site, okay? Now here's ground level. I am going to produce the hole down to the depth. How big is the depth? I want my can to sit all the way in there. Here is how it should look. So with this can right here, I want the lid about one inch underground level. Then I got the actual body of the can. Just like that. Now, in the bottom, when I get down here below my depth, I'm going to taper it like that. I'm going to make a sump, which means in English, I don't want the bottom of the hole flat across. I want it kind of a V. And all through here in this V, I'm going to put rock. 
I'm going to haul in some rock. Now, a bag of rock. An old, a favorite of mine was to use a uh, old flour sack or some sort of, didn't make a lot of racket sack, a sand bag would work. But just plain old river rock. Sweep up along the edge of the road, you know, something like this rock. Something that I can put in there. And this is going to go in the bottom. I'm then going to set my can down in it, and I'm going to put rock all the way around the sides. So this can is sitting in there, and it's completely surrounded by rock. Up until about the level of the lid. Why? Any water that comes in, I want to drain and drain away from here because I live in an area that has a lot of hurricanes and stuff like that. So I can have severe rainfall. And so I want to make sure that any groundwater, I want this on a hill, remember, that flows over and soaks in, don't sit at this can. I want to go by this can. So I want it to drain down and go out away from it. Plus, it makes it easier to pull the can out because if it's dirt, it's up against it, and it's kind of like a suction. But rock, I can grab and pull the can up and out easier if I want to just extract the entire can and move out. Okay? Now, above it, right here on this top, I'm going to take, remember what I told my uncle said? Roofing tar paper. I'm going to take a piece, fold it in half. I want two or three layers of this. And that's going to go all the way across the top of the hole right here. Sitting on top of that lid. And then on top of that, I'm going to put some sort of cap on here that's not going to attract a lot of attention. What's a really good cap to use? This. And here it is. This is a stump that's been cut off. Now this is solid fatwood. Just one big stump. This won't rot in a hundred years. But now you can find these all over the place in the in the woods and etc. But it's something that's not going to rot fast. This will be here. So it could be a big rock. It could be whatever. But something natural in the environment. So I have covered over the top of the can with the tar paper, and it's even or just below ground level and then I sit this on top and I pack pine straw leaves and debris on it around it etc let it naturally decomp down and it becomes part of the woods it just looks like a cut off stump in the middle of nowhere but even in the night when I come back out there I can find this stump that I rock and it moves it won't attract any attention if I pick a place out really good now once that stump's sitting there and I pile pine straw all the way around it and just bury all of it and I walk away, I can come back to that, can I? That stump ain't gonna rot. And so I can find it today, tomorrow, next week, six months from now. But it doesn't attract any attention, just like a cut off tree sitting there. An old, you know, uh, fat wood stump. They're everywhere in the south. And so that does not attract attention in my neck of the woods. Now, treatment of the can. Let's talk about that. Okay, how to treat the can. One, I'm going to take my can, I'm going to make sure the one I buy doesn't have holes in it. It ain't got a big old rusty spot to begin with. If so, I'm going to wire brush that off and I'm going to paint it with really good primer, automotive primer. Okay? A nice heavy coat. I'll probably use two cans on something this side. Just keep adding another layer. When that gets done, I'm going to take it and I'm going to coat it with Flex Seal, that spray rubber. I'm going to coat this whole can in the rubber, except I'm going to run masking tape around this top seam right here. Okay? Like a quarter inch down all the way around because I don't want that Flex Seal sticking to the rubber seal in the lid. So when I go to lift, I want it to come off. I don't have to jerk and jank and make a lot of noise. I want to just quietly lift up and bring this out. Now notice when I just said this, it's buried. I want enough room on these sides over here. How much of the lid is exposed? I want the handles I can unlook, unhook exposed. Okay, so the tar paper is going to press around the top of it. That's going to keep water from directly above. I want the water to come down, drain away, have the rocks drain it below and out so it's sitting in relatively dry. 
okay? By putting flex seal, or we did back in my day, old roofing tar, all over it, and then actually take tar paper and stick the outside of that roofing tar, you made a can that would last 25 years in the ground. It would keep the rust at bay, okay? Now, I've got my can in the ground. I've got it ready to load. I put my stuff into my can. This doesn't all have to be done at one time. One scout can be coming in and finding the location. Two scout come back and dig the hole and leave the empty hole. Come back in three or four days. Has water pooled up in the bottom of the hole? It means I got a water table I didn't know about. Don't put it there. I've done. I, one time I went in, I dug a real nice pit to put something down, and I came back out. And when I came back in with my gear to actually put it in, carrying the rocks and the empty can, that's when I found out I'd hit a water table. I had to pull back and start over. You do not want a running water table there because it will defeat this whole idea of draining water away. Okay? So now I've got my can ready. I put my stuff into my can. The lid has been painted as well. It's been put with that flex seal on it as well. And then the actual rubber seal in here. I've made sure it's clean. There's no that little rubbery stuff. I've rubbed it real good. And then I take a big thick coat of Vaseline all the way around it. That means I set my lid down on it. Just like that. And I've just got enough room on the sides in these open areas I talked about to be able to lock the lid down on it. This one needs some oil. Like that. Okay. Now, I cover over the whole top, the void area around it. I just pack a little pine straw, something dry, and then I put, or you can put gravel on top. I've done that, but it's noisy to take it off. And I don't want to generate a lot of noise. So when I get there, I want to be able to just dig the dirt off the top with my hand or whatever and pull up the tar paper. Now, be careful. Critters might think, man, this is a nice cave down here. So, be careful. Be prepared. Down here in my south, more than once, we pulled the cap, the, the tar paper off, and have a snake. Thinks this is the greatest place in the world to start a living. So, be ready. Be prepared. Okay. If it's clear, then you pop the cap, open it up, get your gear out. Put the lid back on, snap it back, leave. Use your gear, come back and recast your stuff, etc. Now, how do I pick a cash point? Okay, that's important. Set this down. Okay. Here's the road. You're coming off the road right here. And let's say, here's one of the best things I can give you for an idea. A power line cutting across land. As I said in an earlier video, that power line right away is leased from the landowner to the power company. So he has to keep it open. He has to keep it accessible. So you go down that. Now, where's a good place to get? In some dense place down there. Following down that line. So let's say I come off the road right there. And there's a power line right away. Right here. With telephone poles. Okay, I go down to my second pole, and from that, I will now find my place. Now, I know what you're already thinking. Blackie, I'll just bring out my phone, and I'll hit my GPS. Mm -hmm. The old timers that I grew up with would have never trusted that for two reasons. One, it's an electronic device you can't guarantee you're going to have or it's going to work when you really need it. Two, if you don't trust people. If anyone gets a hold of that phone, if anyone or any agency has access to what's on that phone, do you think they're going to notice that you've got a waypoint marked out in the middle of nowhere? This ain't a favorite shop at the mall. It's out in the middle of that national forest. 
kind of odd. That might be some place to want to look, find out what's there. So you never mark the actual site. I would mark that second pole right there. If I was going to do that on my GPS, on my phone, so that if I'm coming cross country and I can't come the way I normally do, I could GPS to that pole. But the actual cash site is off the third pole. But once I get here, I can just walk up the line of the third pole. And right there is my actual cash site. I don't know if I'm a little too high up for that. Let me get a little closer on that for you. So like I said, I GPS to the second pole. Once I get that pole, I can follow the power line up and I know that it's off of the third pole. There's my actual cash site. That's where I'm gonna put it, right there. Now, how to ID a place. I've come in here, I've walked up that line, I found a good place that has cover. Cover that I can dig this hole, put the dirt onto a tarp, pour the dirt into a gar doubled or tripled garbage bag in an Alice pack to haul out so I'm not broadcasting the dirt and giving away, hey, somebody's been digging right here. Two, I'm going to come in with my can and rock after I've verified there's no water table here. My process can that's been sealed with rubber seal or whatever means to add time it being in the ground. I'm going to put the layer of rock in the bottom. I'm going to put it and I'm going to put rock all the way around it. Okay? Until it's all the way up like I talked about. I'm going to seal that can up and I'm going to camouflage it and I'm going to leave. My third trip in, I come in and I pop open the can. I look, it's still bone dry, everything still looks good. I load the can up with the supplies I'm wanting to put out here in my cache. Lock it down, put the cover back on, put the tar paper cover back on, and camouflage it with whatever around. And I'm going to egress out. I have marked it on my GPS or whatever to here. I have marked that on an old-fashioned map so I know where it's at. So if I have to get out here without a phone, I got a good idea where it's at and how to get to it. Okay? So that I can get to there. Now, does this have to be out in the long-flung wilderness? No, it can be in your backyard. You know, I know of, I can tell it now because he's not there anymore, but I know a retired Marine that lived fairly close to me back in the 90s. And he went and put a cache like this that he put some things that he didn't want to be stole, no matter what, uh, into a uh, the old mortar tubes, round mortar tubes, put four of them just like this, and then he put uh, squares around it and filled it with beach sand. And that became his kid's playground, his kid, little small kid sandbox. Like my family member that could come out and drink his coffee every morning and look at that haystack, he could come out in the backyard and see that his stuff was still, still secure. Because they got to dig under that sand pit to get it, don't they? Well, they had to come in and dig under that hay pit, didn't they? They got to know where my stuff is hid out there in the middle of nowhere. This has no relationship to me other than my knowledge. See? So if this area is someplace I'm wanting to camp, explore, whatever, and I'm doing stealth here. And I need to cache gear out here. Or gear I don't want stolen. I put it someplace where the average bear can't find it. See? What's the reference to it in here? This ain't mine, this ain't mine, this ain't mine. I got no connection to it. If you go through my phone, what do you find? You find a waypoint next to a lake that's a down here or down there. That's it. I'm an outdoorsman. That's not a big deal. It's probably a hiking trail or something. But you city people, that would kind of be a red flag, now wouldn't it? Just like for me, if you pulled up my phone and here's this red, this waypoint marked in the middle of Atlanta. What would Blackie need in the middle of Atlanta? Well, that, uh, probably someplace I had to go one time and just forgot about it. You know, that would be kind of easy. People going into cities, waypoints all the time. A city person going out in the middle of nowhere, kind of unusual. 
And if people are looking at your phone trying to figure out where you're hiding stuff, being out in the middle of the woods kind of be a thing. So like I said, mark that and then there. What do I name that in my phone? What would you name that telephone pole down there? Oh, something like where I lost my car keys. Lost my sunglasses. Lost whatever. So if they look at that, oh, you want to go back and find it. Lost my, see, being obvious can be camouflage. See? So let us recap. This video is already long enough for this. One, sorry for the traffic sound guy. One, you pick a can. Something big enough and strong enough for your needs. Two, you will coat the outside of that can with really good automotive paint to prevent rust. Check the inside, this might need some too. Two, coat the outside with Flex Seal, rubber, roofing tar, something to give it extra protection. Okay? Three, you're going to locate your cash site. You're going to come in and dig the hole first, back off, come back. Does it feel full of water? Is it dry? Dry hole? Great. Come in with the can and the rock. Put a layer of rock in the bottom, put the can down, surround it with rock. Have it about a couple inches at the most down from the surface. I don't need to have entrenching tool to get to it. I won't be able to do it with my hand if I got to dig down to it. Okay? Put the roof, the tar paper down over the top or some other plastic. You know, something that's not going to degrade real fast. One of them lids for one of them big totes would be an idea. Okay? Something that diffuses out like a roof to take the rain off directly top, move it out here to the side so it goes down, ends up in the rocks, and go below. Okay? Three, I come back out with the gear I'm going to cache, and I put my cache stuff in, I secure the lid. Four, I make it, every one of these, I come up with a system so I know what I'm talking about, and I got a list of where they're at. Like I said, I waypoint that. I mark on a map or whatever. And this list, if I've got multiple of these, are in here. So that if I have to go to those, due to whatever reason I feel I have to go to those, I can get it. Can this be done, like I said, in your backyard? Absolutely. In fact, that's a great way to practice. You just pick a place in the backyard and put a cache down and put it in such a way it's camouflaged and it's not going to notice it. You know, uh, I knew a guy that he went and there was already a concrete brick square about two foot square and three foot deep that had originally had um, some sort of equipment like a gas main came out from under the house there and it was just a square thing. Well, he went and made a nice roof over the top of it Okay, and then he sat on top of that roof, a great big old huge bird feeder, bird bath. It looked like it was part of it. You couldn't tell what the chamber was below it, and he could hide stuff down there. So that way, if someone comes in your home, even if they ransack your house, they're not getting this. What are the things you'd want to put in here? That's up to you, what you would view this. Is this for, I'm going to be in a remote camping area, and I've got a remote side out here because I'm off-gridding. Well, I want to put gear there so I don't have to haul in everything, every time. Well, this is the way I can cache gear and have it there for me to utilize every time I come out so my gear load becomes lighter and lighter coming out. Can I hide this in my yard to keep people from stealing? Absolutely. They can't find it easy. And thirdly, should things go bad, and you have civil unrest and your house is burned to the ground by angry whatever or you people out in california you have a for a wildfire come through and burn everything to the ground what's in that can will probably be okay so it's a fire safe it's a cache it's a safe it's some place that you can put your stuff and be able to come back to it hope you enjoyed this video guys Please leave any comments and questions below, and thank you very much for supporting my channel and su supporting the Stealth series. There will be more Stealth things coming up, both in personal, camouflage, camps, etc. 
in the near future. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.